Hi, today I want to talk about complexity arising from very simple rules as well as what is the difference between something that is alive and something that is dead and where is the border between those two. Uh, so first thing would be the emergence of complexity from really simple rules. Uh, this idea goes way back, uh, but more recently in an, in relation to computation, it, it was the Ganaway's game of life, which is basically you have a simple creed and in that creed you have squares and each one of those squares has some kind of handful of rules that define how does it move. If, if it has few neighbors, then it stays alive or uh, produces another neighbor. If it has no neighbors around, then it dies. Just simple rules like that. And if you have a big enough creed, big enough playing board, and if you give it enough time, uh, then from simple initial conditions, you can get vast amounts of complexity emerging. And I'm sure you probably heard about this, but it, it's a fun thing to play around with. And now there are some three dimensional versions of it coming out. But whenever I hear about it at uh, this Conway's Game of Life, I'm instantly reminded of the most real three dimensional version of it. And that of course is our own universe. Uh, our universe starts out with a bunch of really simple particles. We have just a, uh, maybe a dozen of them, a handful that really matter, breaking down atoms even further. We have quarks, uh, we have electrons, and even atoms themselves, if you just focus on atoms, they're just up quark and down quark that make up in different combinations, the proton and the neutron, and then you have electrons around them. So all of the matter that we see in our universe all the supernovas, all the different planets, all the gas giants, the Jupiters, Europas, all the comets, asteroids, meteors, supernovas, uh, gas and clouds of galaxies and, and all of this stuff that we find is just three fundamental particles doing their thing, arising and emerging from really simple conditions but producing all of this complexity. One of the things that is always mind-blowing to me is that our universe is configured in a way where we have this thing called the periodic table of elements. Like it blows my mind that it's even possible that we have hydrogen, helium, gold, you know, plutonium, iron, silver, gold, uh, all of these different chemical elements and that they are able to interact with one another because, you know, if I were to take a guess then in this ultimate multiverse that we live in, the vast majority of universes are empty and have nothing in them. It would have been so much easier due to random luck that our entire universe is at best maybe filled with quarks or, or electrons or photons. But that the laws of physics conspire together in a way that it's possible for about a hundred different chemical elements to come together, about 90 or 80 that are stable, uh, and that the, these chemical elements are able to interact with each other, that we have chemistry and organic chemistry, and that eventually, given the right conditions and billions of years, beings such as us can emerge. And uh, I love the idea of aliens and just, you know, thinking and wondering what the aliens would be like, but I look around on planet Earth and the things that we have on our planet, you know, never cease to amaze me. What biology has able to done, natural selection produced in different conditions. Like we are used to thinking of the Earth as kind of mundane place, but we actually have some quite extreme conditions and life indeed has adapted to every nook and cranny on our planet uh, to be able to produce offspring and copies of themselves. Uh, it somewhat uh, drives me into some existential angst and depression when I think about just the meaninglessness of it all. Uh, like I mentioned in previous videos, that what we really are is just a bunch of atoms that came together billions of years ago in some soup and accidentally made a copy of itself and that made more copies of itself. And the ones that were better at making copies of themselves that those went on to make more copies. So it's all about being able to make more copies of yourself. You know, then you're doing a good job. Um, so it's pointless, there's no meaning. Of course, 
you know uh, maybe post it as a big question at the beginning of the video like where is the border between life and death living and dead you know that border is only in our heads you know there is no light switch in the universe that determines or judges something to be alive or dead just like morality and ethics what we think of as good or bad the same way it's simply a human invention there is not a yes or no answer and there's not a right or wrong answer to it so what is living or dead is only what we name uh, what we name it i'm happy that under recent times more and more attention is put on this issue in the sense that we wouldn't be so blind and naive and you know bad way childish that we think of um, that we think of the world and the universe in terms of yes or no answers uh, it's all a huge gray mess and uh, no one knows exactly what's going on and it's hilarious uh, look at so many people walking around with faces pretending like they know what's going on but no one knows what's going on truly nonetheless of course you can have you have all the right in the world to feel comfortable in your skin and walk around the world confident as everyone should but what is alive or dead you know we all agree that bacteria is alive i mean i would say bacteria is alive and most of the scientific community would also agree that that bacteria is alive but then we have something like viruses and viruses aren't able to make copies of themselves independently and they lack many of the functions uh, that a biological normal cell has which is producing its own nutrients and stuff and sometimes when i think about it the right way the idea of you know what is the point between living and dead it gives me this kind of creepy creepy vibes of thinking about viruses not really being alive they are just sort of weird molecular agents that are doing their thing but then we can go even a step down and we can look at some organic soup of chemicals you know or even just fire a chemical reaction thing taking place is that alive uh, for understandable reasons people before us uh, did think that fire is alive in in many ancient uh, beliefs and religions fire was thought to be alive same way as volcanoes or you know uh, stuff like that the natural stuff that happens that is powerful force of nature that can't be explained any other way of course you can explain away by it having some kind of consciousness some agency and purpose but still i think it's fascinating to think about our universe with these really simple starting conditions and also the laws of physics really simple starting conditions and you just put those things out there those parameters and you throw a little bit of matter you know somewhere in the multiverse and then a huge boom happens and then billions of years you have you have creatures thinking about you know what's all that stuff about uh, i think that is fascinating that um, that is what our universe is it's it's a more complicated uh, game of life uh, that's i think maybe that's why it was called the game of life i'm not so familiar with it but and of course i mentioned that you know our laws of physics are so specifically configured for life and living creatures to be able to exist like I have thought about that a lot how insane it is how many things need to be exactly right that we would be able to live and breathe here I mean for me as an outside observer when I think about the universe in that kind of way for me given you know I already take it for granted that we live in the multiverse because otherwise we will get to that in a moment but but otherwise you couldn't explain why the universe is the way it is because the laws of physics are so precisely configured that either we live in a simulation or either God created our universe because it is so specific. So the most reasonable option is that we live in a multiverse, that there are vast amounts, infinite amount of universes possibly, and each one of those just has totally random different configurations of the laws of physics and starting particles. Of course, just by random luck, some of them have exactly the precise configurations to allow conscious creatures to exist and for the universe to not be as chaotic so we are in this universe where we are able to observe with this very special universe but for me that is mind-blowing uh, what the probability must have been for our universe to be 
created. It's something 0 0.00 and so many zeros, I cannot fathom that. Um, but also, tons of other interesting possibilities arise. You know, when laws of physics become arbitrary, then you can very well have universes where you have ghosts and supernatural powers and, you know, all kinds of crazy magic that we currently think is impossible. Of course, you know, it, it's interesting, like what the, I've asked people this, like what the definition of magic is. And basically people say that magic is something that we can't explain yet. So it's undiscovered uh, laws of physics. Like the way that I think about it, anything that can happen in our universe happens due to some laws of physics. Like even if there are ghosts or if you're using like telekinesis or something, like there are some laws of physics that make it happen. You know, it doesn't just happen. Anything and everything that happens happens for some kind of a physical reason. Um, even magic, you know, even consciousness. Uh, for consciousness, consciousness is a special case. And I think it's possible that there is much more to consciousness. There definitely is much more to consciousness than people think. I kind of laugh at people who say that, oh, consciousness is just an illusion. I mean, anyone who says that consciousness is an illusion, like you are an illusion, if you think that consciousness is an illusion. If there's anything real ever, then that is our conscious experience. Like we can't be certain of anything else except that we are conscious creatures. So like that is, that is the first thing, that is the only thing that we can be sure of. And saying that that is an illusion is just laughable. So uh, I dismiss that. Since it is so weird, so weird, I leave some certain possibility that there is something more fundamental about consciousness. Nothing magical, but that there might be something much more fundamental about consciousness, that maybe it is a part of our universe kind of like space-time is a part of our universe. Perhaps, perhaps not. Whatever the answer is, it is crazy that life is able to exist, that we are able to exist. Oh, what I wanted to say before that, you know, as an outside observer, if I was just looking at our universe, you know, I would be mind blown, even if, if the universe had the given laws of physics that make it possible for st stars to exist. Like even that, that it's possible for chemical elements to come together and for nuclear reactions to happen to sustain stars and their equilibrium and balance of uh, gravitation and pressure forces and for it to fuse new, new elements and produce electromagnetic spectrum in different wavelengths. Like even if that is made possible, that is mind blowing trick and a miracle basically that happens. So, <laughs> and you know, not only that, but it's possible. I think that is so underrated. I think that is one of the most underrated things ever about, you know, thinking about the world scientifically that, you know, we are here and we are able to exist. We take it so for granted because we are in it. The same way that it's so easy to take it for granted that we are human beings because we are human beings and those quite many of us, you know. I am sad that our civilization and culture has temporarily uh, been kind of blindsided by many things and money and greed and, and a lot of stupid stuff uh, from what our true potential could be as living beings. But this is a brief period of time where a lot of crazy things will happen really shortly. In just a few years, we are having insane technologies. But yeah, I just think that this is something to be more appreciated. Um, like I said, and, and I would be happy if you think about it, like three options from me, what I think, given that the laws of physics are so specific. If, if gravity was any different, you know, stars would explode or not happen at all, or, you know, no organic chemistry could happen, you know, any single small thing would be different about the universe, we couldn't be here. So let's not take it for granted and let's not take it for granted that we are human beings. Don't follow what everyone else is doing and don't follow what everyone else is saying. So I, I propose three options, either 
God created the universe with the set parameters to be able to contain life. Either we live in the either we live in a simulation, again parameters tuned exactly in a way to be able uh, to produce life, or the fourth op third option, uh, either we live in one universe out of multiverse of infinite many varieties, and we just live in this one where we are lucky enough, and we even have no idea how lucky we are. We are lucky enough to live in a universe where the laws of physics are exactly the same uh, that life is able to evolve. And I, and I think so much about the fact that, you know, given this multiverse and our own universe as well, 200 billion galaxies with each with few hundred billion, 100 few hundred billion stars with few hundred billion galaxies, it's always so insane. And I think about it a lot. How many civilizations, how many species that got to our level, or like a thousand years ago, and then supernova, the star exploded, or a nearby star somewhere exploded. We are so lucky that we are at the point of a major technological revolution, which we are in for sure, but it's only getting crazier. And we don't have any black holes coming towards us. We don't have a star going supernova. We are so immensely lucky. We are so lucky we don't even know. So I would give that as food for thought, as it is, at least for me, food for thought. So these are just some thoughts about these ideas. I hope there was something interesting here for you. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for watching and take care.